Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal this Thursday. I hope the week is going well wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world. We are close to the weekend now, slowly getting there as we head through the first international break of the season and the internationals are starting right now as well. Today, Thomas Party in action today, Jakub Kivior in action today. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show and that should make this horrible, horrible first international break of the season go a little bit quicker from this point onwards but plenty to discuss still we're going to talk about Martin Odegaard and his injury issues or worries whatever it is you want to call it following the game uh, against Brighton we'll talk about Kieran Tierney who's back training at London Colney as well we'll look at the Arsenal women who had a fantastic win yesterday in the Champions League of course against Rangers we'll discuss uh, the Ballon d'Or as well Arsenal four nominees in the men's Ballon d'Or one in the women's as well, so good news for the football club. Got quite plenty of questions and comments from you guys as well. But let's get started on Martin Odegaard, shall we? Now we all saw the pain that he was in in the game against Brighton. That early kick he took um, that was really, really nasty, and you can see it absolutely affected him the whole way through the game. He sort of soldiered on for as long as he could, but he was not this Martin Odegaard we all knew. You could see the movement. You could see he was grimacing every time. I was looking really closely at him in that first half in particular. I was, I was sure he was going to have to go off because he just didn't have that power to really sort of go. I mean, the, you, we all know that Martin Odegaard is the guy who leads the press, who triggers the press for Arsenal. And he was trying to do that, but he couldn't, you could see, couldn't put a lot of weight on his leg to actually sort of give himself that that initial acceleration burst that he usually has. He was really, really struggling. Eventually went off in the second half. There was that clip doing the rounds of, I think one of the fans close by to the bench videoed him and he looked distraught on the bench sitting there as, as he uh, was watching the second half unfold. He has gone over with Norway for the internationals and the, the, the coach, Solbakken, has been speaking ahead of their game. Uh, he did a press conference yesterday and this is what he said. He was asked about Odegaard's ankle. Now, the injury he got in that game against Wolves, it wasn't really an ankle injury. Not Wolves, sorry, Brighton. It wasn't an ankle injury, was it? It was from that sort of studs up challenge on the shin, basically, it looked like. Um, but he was asked about an ankle injury in the press conference yesterday. And this is what he said. He said, I don't think that is what it is. I think it's another bang. I was about to say, I think it is something other than the bang, so to speak. So not exactly the clearest of words from Sol Bakken in his press conference. But he did add that he thought that Odegaard would train ahead of their game. So that's good news. Obviously, if, he's, if he wasn't going to train, it looked like he was going to miss the first game, then you'd be a little bit worried. But the fact that they think he's probably fit enough to be training, you would think it's not that bad. Uh, ideally, from an Arsenal point of view, they would just give him a complete rest here and not take any risks with Martin Odegaard. But obviously, these are Nations League game for Norway. They're important. He's their captain. Uh, I think he's their captain. I'm saying that off the top of my head there, just presuming he's a Norway captain. I think he is, but I might be wrong. If I am, let me know, as always, in the comments below. But he's obviously a very, very important player for Norway. And um, they're not just going to leave him out just for Arsenal's sake, even though we all probably wish he would. But that's the latest on Odegaard from the Norway camp, is that he is struggling with something that is described as a bang, but he is expected to train ahead of their game, which I think is tomorrow. Um and yeah, so hopefully it's nothing too serious for Martin Odegaard. From one injury to the other, Kieran Tierney, now if you're watching on YouTube, he has uploaded uh, a couple of pictures to his Instagram story yesterday of him back in training at Arsenal, out on the grass. Anyway, it looks like he's doing individual work, not with the team yet, but there he is. If you're watching, it has also been included in Arsenal's Champions League squad that was announced yesterday, which makes me think he is part of of the plans. I still think he's way, way down the pecking order, of course, but you know, sometimes you see these players who aren't part of the plans get frozen out completely. He's clearly not in that position because Arsenal have included him in the squad. So we might still see Kieran Tini in action during the first half of the season at some point. Who knows if this injury is, you know, if he's come back from injury is going pretty well. There's that game against Bolton in the League Cup coming up where we might see him get some minutes in that sort of game. So you know, good news for the squad. Good news, particularly for Kieran Tierney. Um, obviously, a little bit late for him to get the move that he would have wanted in the summer and Arsenal probably would have wanted in the summer. But if he can come back, get a few minutes under his belt, a few appearances here and there in the first team before the January transfer window, then maybe he will be able to get a move when that window does open. Uh, Brian here has got in touch on the to on the topic of Kieran Tierney. He says, hi, Charles. I see Kieran Tierney is back in training. Do you see him leaving on loan to Turkey as there is the window still open, I think? Also, as a Republic of Ireland fan, I really hope Deck brings his best shin pads for Saturday's match. I'd expect him to get kicked 
up and down the pitch. Yeah, I'm sure Declan Rice is going to get a very, very warm welcome when he uh, steps out on the pitch in Ireland at the weekend. Hopefully, though, those shin pads, if he does get a kick in, do uh, do protect him because we don't want any injuries to Declan. Thank you very much. In terms of Kieran Tierney, do I see him leaving on loan? I doubt it just because he's not had any minutes. He's not fit. I mean, he's back doing a bit of tra- fitness work, training work on the pitch at the moment, but he's not joined in with the squad yet. I'm not sure when the Turkish transfer window closes, but it will be very, very soon, I imagine. And I'd be surprised if someone takes a chance on him now, because if you're going to get him, you're going to pay his wages and you're still not going to be able to use him for, I don't know, a month or something like that. Then it would be very, very doubtful. And, you know, the fact Arsenal will be including him in the Champions League squad, albeit, you know, they don't have the biggest of squads. So that might just be do it to tick the boxes and to make the numbers up. But the fact they have included him in that squad, maybe they are thinking he could be useful between now and the end. Well, certainly in, until January anyway. So I'd be surprised if if Kieran goes over there as well. Um, I think that, I'm not sure. He, he struggled when he came over to London initially, Kieran, in terms of homesickness and everything like that. He went over to Sociedad and he was he felt at home at Sociedad. There is that kind of link between Sociedad and the and and Scotland though as well in terms of how it is and and, and things that might have helped him settle a little bit. I don't really see Tierney going over to Turkey. I'd be surprised with that. Um, I think he'll stay and then potentially get a move over to somewhere else come the January transfer window. Okay, in terms of Ballon d'Or, look at that. Four Arsenal players, four Arsenal men included in the men's Ballon d'Or list. Only Real Madrid, who have seven, I think, uh, have more players than Arsenal in the Ballon d'Or final nominees. And, and you know, the players we'd all expect would be in there. Bukai Saka, William Saliba, Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard. You've got Mariana Ka- uh, Caldente as well, of course. I mean, mainly for what she's done with Barcelona. She's an Arsenal player now, played very well. Uh, so that's a good start to her Arsenal career. But obviously, the main reason she's in the Ballon d'Or nominees is because of her uh, performances for Barcelona before she made the move in the summer. But again, it just shows the quality that Arsenal have in this team and having this squad at the moment that only Real Madrid have got more players nominated for the Ballon d'Or award this summer. Look, none of the, none of the Arsenal players are going to win the Ballon d'Or. I think that's pretty obvious. But just to be in the nominees and to have so many in the nominees as well shows that the quality of the squad right now. And um, and yeah, well-deserved for all of them. Declan, Martin, William, and Bukai Saka. It's got to be Rodri for me. I know there's a, there's a lot of people saying Vinicius is the favourite and Vinicius should win. I know obviously he played key, key part in them winning the Champions League again, scored in the final, of course. But for me, Rodri deserves to be named Ballon. I can't stand Rodri. There's not many players I dislike more playing currently than Rodri. But one thing you can't argue with is he is an unbelievable footballer who just makes Manchester City even better. And not just Manchester City, Spain as well. You know, he's won it all in the last couple of years. The treble two years ago, the Premier League again this season. Spain, he wins the Euros with them. He's just an unbelievable player who doesn't get the credit that he deserves. And I don't think he gets the credit he deserved over the last couple of years for his performances. Um, And for me, he absolutely should be the winner of the Ballon d'Or. This uh, this season, but let me know your thoughts on it. If you disagree, who do you think deserving Ballon d'Or? Are you in the Vinicius camp, or do you agree with me and think Rodri would be the deserving winner this time around? On the internationals that are kicking off today, so we've got Thomas Party in action, of course, for Ghana over uh, against Angola in their qualifier for Afcon, and then you've got David Raya for Spain, probably not going to play, and Jakub Kivio. I expect he will play, even though he's not getting any minutes under his belt yet against Scotland in Glasgow. So that's the first of the international round of fixtures, including Arsenal players. More tomorrow than plenty on Saturday, of course. Right, fantastic win. Now, I'll tell you what, I saw someone in the comments. It really wound me up. I'm not going to bring it bring it up here and actually put the comment on the screen, but I did reply to it at the time because it just really wound me up. So I was saying, why are you talking about the Arsenal women on this channel? It's just like, I mean, have a word of yourself. Arsenal women, Arsenal men, it's an Arsenal channel. I talk about Arsenal, so I'm going to talk about the Arsenal women. And they had a massive Champions League game, which was huge for them, huge for the club, huge for the continued growth of the women's team here. You know, they missed out on the Champions League last year, which was an absolute hammer blow in terms of the club's plans for the sold out Emirates Stadiums games that would have brought. So I'm going to talk about the Arsenal women for a bit. And if you don't like it, then turn off and don't watch this channel. I'm talking about Arsenal. It's not just Arsenal men. I talk about the youth team. I talk about the women's team. I talk about, frankly, what I want. And I want to talk about the Arsenal women. So, yeah, if you're bothered by that, then just don't watch, I have to say. Um, 6-0, brilliant win for them yesterday. Um, just brilliant. I mean, I was watching that. I didn't sit and watch the entire game. I was 
trying to get my kids ready for bed, but uh, I was trying to watch as much of it as I could. And some of the finishes, absolutely fantastic. Uh, Caitlin Ford, obviously scoring four goals, the hero of the uh, hero of the night for Arsenal. Kim Little with a penalty, great finish from Alicia Russo as well. And yeah, really quality, high quality goals. Caitlin Ford's, I think it was a hat trick goal from the, the ball over to the. It was it was that kind of mirror image of Alex Song to um, Robin Van Persie all those years back. It's really quality goal, brilliant ball in, brilliant volley at the back post. And yeah, um, fantastic win for the Arsenal, who have now a huge, huge game coming up against Rosenberg, who beat Atletico Madrid on penalties yesterday um, prior to Arsenal's game against Rangers. Jonas speaking about it, said a very good team performance, a good result as well. We got off to a really good start. We wanted in the Champions League. Of course, we're delighted to be playing in the final on Saturday night. Huge game, that absolutely huge. So much pressure on it as well. That one-off game to, to in terms of the qualifying. Uh, on whether the win last night will give Arsenal confidence going into that game against Rosenberg. He said, it, it, we will, but so will Rosenberg. They will be delighted with their result against Atletico. It's going to be two confident team going into the final. And now we need to recover. Then we need to prepare. And then we need to bring absolutely 100% on Saturday. We need every single one of our supporters here. Our supporters were great tonight. They were the 12th player. And we need to create that again on Saturday. And if we do that, then we're going to progress in the Champions League. You know, it's going to be, it's a huge night for Arsenal. As I said, the disappointment across the club, not just in terms of the women's team, the women's supporters, but genuinely across the club, for everyone involved in the men's team, everything. The disappointment of Arsenal women missing out last season on the Champions League was huge. And the desperate, desperate for that not to happen again. And this was the perfect start. Really, really good win. Really impressive win. Fingers crossed they can get the job done against Rosenberg on Saturday. Okay, moving on to some of your questions and comments now before we wrap up today's show. Malik has gone in touch and says Arteta still hasn't signed his contract extension. It's worrying now. Think the delay is from Mikel. Maybe he still isn't decided yet. Don't buy that the board is relaxed given how well he's doing and um, managerial positions are scarce across Europe. I'm not, I'm not worried. I haven't been worried at all. I'm still not worried. You know, if this goes on another three or four months, then I might start to get a little bit worried because the last thing Arsenal need is from Mikel Arteta. To, uh, to go at the moment, given how, how things are building at Arsenal and the um, and how the club is just improving year on year by the, with uh, Mikel in charge. But I don't, I don't see anything to worry about right yet. We've heard what Mikel said publicly in the last few weeks about his contract, about how happy he is at Arsenal and how it will be resolved once the transfer window shut. And I still think it will be. So I, I get it, Malik. I, I get that there's probably a lot of people feeling very similar to you right now in terms of just wanting it sorted so there is no sort of uncertainty hanging over things when it comes to Arteta's future but I'm not I'm not concerned right now I, I still think it will be done and I still think it'll be done relatively quickly uh, Pete says we scored 91 league goals last season not sure why anyone thinks someone who would have just scored a higher percentage of those 91 would have made the difference we're built to spread the goals around and one person scoring a higher percentage of those 91 wouldn't have won us the league. Points dropped that shouldn't have been dropped is what lost us the league. I Yeah, I mean, I tend to agree. And this is an Arsenal team that scored a lot of goals and they share their goals around. And it's a fantastic thing. And it's a great thing because if someone goes off the ball, you've always got someone else to score goals. But I do understand how some people say, well, those those games where Arsenal did point, drop points last season, say the... West Ham at home, for example, when they absolutely dominated that game at about 30 shots, didn't score. West Ham had about four shots and scored twice. I get why people will look at that and say, well, if you had a prolific striker, a proper sort of gunman striker who just doesn't doesn't need many chances to score, you have a player like that in a game like that when you're struggling, then you've got a better chance of winning that game and winning the league because he will take one of the chances that falls his way. If you've got people who maybe need three chances to score, then... Um, or someone who basically scores every chance he gets, like a Haaland, for example. But as I said yesterday, those sort of strikers don't grow on trees. I just don't look around Europe right now. And I know people are pointing to Osimhen and Jokerez and people like that, but I'm still not sure that they, they make the difference, that they make Arsenal into a title-winning team. I really don't. And I also look at the numbers that Kai Havertz is serving up now since he's moved to a striker, and I think he could well be a 20-goal-a-season striker this season for Arsenal, the way he started, two from three as well. You know, I, I'm still... I'm still pretty confident he will get around that sort of 15 to 20 goal mark this season as well. So, yeah, I'm kind of like you. I don't think the striker would make the absolute difference, but I still feel like Arsenal could do with one more. Maybe not necessarily to be the starter, because I think you've got to be a hell of a striker to replace Kai Havertz right now because of not just the goals he's scoring, but what he brings to the team as a whole. Um, but it would be nice to have another option, I think, 
anyway. And Arsenal clearly felt the same. That's why they went for Benjamin Sesko. But um, when they didn't get him, there was just no one out there that they really wanted. And I know, again, people are saying, well, why didn't they go for Osman? Well, the answer to that is they didn't fancy Osman. They didn't want to sign him. They didn't want to pay whatever money was available. They didn't, obviously didn't think he was worth it. If they, yeah, Because if they had, they would have signed him. Because the money was there. They do have money to spend. I know a lot of people, again, have been saying, what's going on with PSR? Is it we haven't got money to spend? Arsenal do, did have money to spend. As far as I'm aware, from the conversations I've had, and from people who know a lot more about it than me and study everything a lot harder than I do when it comes to finances, no one has suggested that Arsenal are in any sort of PSR trouble. There was money to spend there this summer. They just chose not to spend it. Uh, Gary here says, hi, Charles. Um, are you at all concerned with the form of Declan Rice? He looks a shadow of himself from last season where he put in seven out of seven to ten, seven or eight out of ten performances every week. He had an average Euros and has continued that on into new season. I think his poor form may have contributed to him getting two yellow cards. I'd love to hear your thoughts. No, I'm not. I have to say, I just think with Declan Rice, as a plenty of other players who had such a mad season last season, went and played the summer at the Euros, I just think they're struggling a little bit at the start of the season. I saw I saw um, an interview with the PFA chief who's been doing a lot of research into it and he's been speaking to players who played in the summer and who didn't and he says the difference is absolutely huge and he pointed to how well Haaland has started the season, how well Salah has started the season. Those players who had a complete break, complete rest and just look on it right now compared to some of the other players. I mean, Declan Rice basically had two weeks off in a year and so he came back and maybe just, he's, I don't think Declan Rice had a bad start to the season. I don't think he's been, like you said, he hasn't hit those some of the heights he hit last year. But I just think he's struggling for a little bit for, for fitness and for energy and things like that at the moment, just like plenty of other players who uh, had such a key role in the Euros. And I didn't think he was that bad at the Euros either. I thought he got a lot of unfair flack at the Euros. I think he was left on his own in midfield for England because Kobe Maynew, who everyone was praising, um, and who did do well in, from an attacking sense, just left that midfield completely open at times. For uh, And Declan Rice basically had to do it by himself because he had no midfield partner. And that just left him really, really exposed. I've never seen him look so tired at the end of games as he did in those England games in the uh, in the summer. But I still felt he had a decent tournament for England, despite what some other people have said. And um, and yeah, may I, did it contribute to him getting yellow cards? No, to be fair, I think what contributed to getting two yellow cards at the weekend was one bad tackle, lunging tackle, uh, and then one dreadful refereeing decision. <laughs> That's what contributed to him getting two yellow cards. I don't think it was down to poor form. I, uh, I have to say. But thank you very much for your comment and everyone else who's got in touch and left their comments and opinions as well. I'll be back tomorrow to talk all things Arsenal. Once again, anything you want me to discuss in that show, let me know and I'll get them included, of course. Oh, actually, I should have said this at the beginning. I always forget this. I think myself and James Ben just sitting down later on today to record Inside Arsenal Extra Time. So if there's anything you want us to discuss in that, then get on it pretty quickly. Get down into the comments, start it with Extra Time. And then give us your opinion, your comment, your question, and we'll pull some of those together and get them included in the second half of that show as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a very good day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.